Okay, we have our first uh, bonus video talk about um, shear flow. So that's defined as a little q times by the shear force, normally give that symbol v, times by big Q, which is the first moment of area for the particular section that we're interested in divided by I, and that's going to be the second moment of area for the entire cross-section that we're interested in. This is, strictly speaking, only supposed to be used for thin sections. So if you were doing a, a beam, and it was relatively thick, you was applying the load, even if you was applying the load in a nice disputed way. And this was a pivot and that was a pivot. The stress that I'm getting, I wouldn't expect to be nice and uniform. So in this case, you're not supposed to really use shear flow, but uh, it's a good approximation. What it, is giving you is the shear stress per unit width across that section. So across a particular section there, uh, Q is uh, is the per unit width of the stress along there. And for this bar problem, we expect Q max to be in the middle. And we actually expect there to be no shear stress at the top. Okay. Uh, and if I did a kind of cross pr uh, profile of what the Q looks like, it looks like a palabra for a simple sort of uh, rectangle section like that. So we are getting maximum shear stress occurring in the middle. So if, if I'm expecting my beams to be sliding apart, I would expect them to be breaking around about the, uh, the middle section. So where do I use this? Um, strictly speaking, ideally, we should be using fin sections. So we can imagine fin plates. So here I've got a fin plate, horizontal one. And then I could maybe stick on another fin plate, make it a vertical one this time. And you can start seeing I could build up T beams and I beams and, and whatnot. And um, that's when uh, I would particularly want to use this equation. So here, uh, with my two plates, I could either glue them together. I could put some glue between the two sections. Or we could have our two plates and we could maybe weld them together. We've got a fin plate there. Uh, and down this section we'll have some welding going on on that particular side and then some welding on the other side. So we could weld them like that. Or we could maybe put some bolts or some nails. Obviously it's metal, it would have to be bolts. Uh, what should I use for now? Rusty now, yeah, so we've got are rusty now and we're going to space them apart by s okay so for, for the problems on the left essentially speaking there you'll be particularly interested in where you're going to get maximum amount of shear which will be associated with the width of the lower plate here so this this it's the glue section here and also well it's the going to be how much um, the weld section is going to have in terms of width there 
So in that case, you'd take something like um, uh, um, take the Q value, and then I would want to divide it by T, and then I would compare it to some allowable stress, shear stress, associated with the glue or the weld. Okay, that would be that example. For the nails, um, well, normally with nails, you know what kind of force they're allowed to take. So we've got a nail there, and that nail will have um, some force that can it can be that can have be applied. And in this case, you would want to make sure that the uh, um, applied force would be lower than Q, which would again be the, the lower Q there that. The, and the lower section, um, well, just just below that top section there. So you're kind of measuring it at this point here, and then you would want to um, be looking at um, S in terms of uh, the spacing. Okay, so that's uh, um, pretty much how I think we'll be using shear flow in um, this particular module. Stop there for now.